Alrighty, my mates, welcome back. <clears throat> oh, sorry about that. So, in the last video, we learned how to make a very simple window, and we also learned how to make some text, throw it on screen, and also how to make our window appear constantly without disappearing real quick. Now, of course, in the upcoming videos, I'm going to show you guys how to make drop down menus, buttons that interact with your program, and a whole bunch of stuff. However, before we learn about a bunch of cool widgets we first need to know how to organize the layout because I don't know it's just better if we just don't have a bunch of crap on the screen and then we try to figure it out so let's go ahead and figure out how to organize crap first so we probably can get rid of these two things these two middle lines and we'll keep this one and this one because basically every single program that we make in Kinter we're going to need a main window and we're also going to want to display on the screen. So I don't want to say every single bit of code from here on out, but just use that as a general guideline. Anything that we're going to be typing for the rest of these tutorials, this is going to be your main layout. And I'm going to be teaching you guys all the new stuff in here since this is pretty much the basic framework. So the first thing I want to tell you guys is something called a frame. Now think of a frame as an invisible rectangle that can be a basic layout that you can put things in. So basically say that this entire screen, this entire video is your main program. Well we can make a frame that goes on top and we can also make another frame that goes on bottom and we can put a bunch of widgets in either the top one or the bottom one. So it's a very simple layout just to get stuff from the top, bottom, left, or right. So how do we make these invisible containers, as you can think of them? Well, first, I'll make one for the top. And I'm going to call it top frame. Now what you do is you set this equal to frame root. This is pretty much saying, okay, I'm going to make an invisible container, and it's going to go in the main window, the root. Okay, well now that we made it, let's just go ahead and place it in our window because right now it's in our program but it doesn't display in our main window remember anytime we want something to display we have to pack it in this pretty much says okay place it somewhere in our main window our main program however you want to think of it so right now we have one container one invisible rectangle well of course if we just had one it would be useless because we can just put crap in our window if we were going to do that so let's go ahead and make a bottom one as well so we'll make a bottom frame and to create this one you of course do the same exact thing say okay we're creating a frame blank rectangle and we're putting it in our main window and for this one what we want to do is you want to take bottom frame and pack it in as well but however there is a parameter that you can throw inside pack to say where exactly do you want to put it or pack it in your main window well what we want to do with this bottom frame is we actually want to take it and put it on the bottom holy crap what the heck am I typing so side equals bottom so right now we have two invisible containers we have one on top someone just freaking texted me and one on bottom alright so you're probably scratching your head thinking this thing Bucky how come you had to say that this frame went on bottom but you didn't need to say anything for this frame on top well you can actually um, pack this one in the top explicitly but we don't really need to do that because by default this is just gonna go in your main window and if we put something on the bottom of it well this is obviously going to be on the top of it it's like if you have a cup on your desk and you put something to the left of it well then that cups going to be on the right of it you know so we don't need to explicitly say it so right now that is what we have so let's throw some widgets in there so I might as well just show you guys how to make widgets right now instead of using labels because labels can get kind of boring after a while so let's make a few buttons a button of course being just a simple rectangle that you can press or click so why is oh my god I'm gonna drop kick my computer if I type in the wrong spot one more time alright 
So let's make four buttons. I'll name one. Button one, how do you make a button? Well, of course, the object name is button, and it's going to take some parameters. The first parameter we're going to throw in is, OK, right now you have two frames. What frame do you want to put it in? Well, uh, let's say that we want to put like three buttons in the top frame and one button in the bottom frame. Why not? So the first one is, where do you want to put it? Just put this one in the top frame. The next thing it takes is, what do you want to show up on the button? So if you ever were like um, on web design and you always saw those buttons like, say, submit or something for your forms, this is pretty much the value of your button. So the text parameter is, um, it's either going to say like, click me, submit, press here, whatever. So for button one, just so it'll be easy to see what's going on. I'll just name it button one. So the last parameter that I'll show you guys is FG. And what you do is you actually set this equal to a color. Now this is actually optional. You don't even need it, but just so whenever you run our program, it's gonna be really easy to see what's going on. I'll set each button to a different color. So now the words button one are gonna appear on this button and it's gonna be red. That's the text, not the button itself. That's foreground. So now what we can do is kind of cheat and make button two, button three, button four. Now remember that I said buttons one through three, they're all gonna go in your top rectangle right up here. And we'll have one button going in the bottom one. So of course this one is gonna be bottom frame and of course the text on each button is going to be different and we'll also make the colors different as well so we'll say that um, the second button can be blue third one the text can be green not grand not my grandma green and third one can be I don't know purple why not alright so we got three buttons on the top and we got one on the bottom so what we can do is, of course, remember this, because I know that it takes some getting used to and it's not really intuitive, but if we just ran this program right now, check it out. Nothing is going to display. That's because creating a GUI is kind of a two-step process, creating widgets. You first need to create them, and this is pretty much your settings, your details, and then you need to pack them in or tell your program that you want to actually display those widgets and where you want to display them. So what we can do is we can actually take button one, pack it in, and do this with all your buttons. And this will actually display them on your screen. Now, three and four. So this displays them on your screen and this just runs the main loop. So let me run this and check it out. So you're saying, okay, so we have three buttons on the top frame and one on the bottom frame. But right now, it looks like it's all in one column. So what the heck, Bucky? What's going on? Well, by default, whenever you pack things in, they get packed on top of each other. So even though you can't see those invisible frames, buttons one through three are indeed in that top frame and button four is indeed on that bottom frame. So what if you actually wanted to make it like how you thought it was going to appear in your head? That these buttons one, two, three are going to appear to the left of each other and that this bottom four would be on the bottom of it. Well, this pack actually has a parameter. So remember, by default, whenever you pack stuff in, it gets packed on top of each other like you're stacking blocks. So if you wanted something to, to appear on the left, of your window, what you need to do is press side equals left. So what this parameter does, we copy this, it says okay, pack this button in and whenever you do, place it as far left as possible. So it's gonna say okay, take button one, pack it in the top frame and put it as far left as possible. So now buttons one, two, and three are gonna appear on the left of each other, pretty much side by side. And we'll just go ahead and explicitly put a parameter for button four. Button four will be on bottom. 
Now, this doesn't really matter because it's the only thing in the bottom frame. So bottom, top, whatever, it won't really matter. But if we run it, check it out now. So buttons one, two, and three are in that top frame, which we told it up here. And whenever it packs it in or places it in the frame, it takes each button and places it as far left as possible. So that's why button one was to the left, button two, well, okay, we'll put it as far left as possible, but you know, button one is already in the way, so that's why it's lining up side by side. And button three, top frame, as far left as possible without going over button one or two. And of course, button four is the only thing in the bottom frame, so that's why it appeared under here. So pretty cool. That is the very basics of how you can make invisible containers and how you can display widgets inside those invisible containers exactly and precisely how you want them to. Now of course this is a very simple layout but there is obviously a lot more to cover and I'll actually save that for the next tutorial since this one's getting kind of long but for now thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe check out my website forum yeah yeah I'll shut up now see you later